page, Gavin Cooney of the 42 is with us. Good morning, Gavin. Morning, morning. How are you? Very good. You were in Tala last night. I was indeed, yeah. Good Enjoy, stuff. Enjoyable night out. No goals, but enjoyable nonetheless. It was enjoyable. I watched it. We'll talk about the football in a second, but we do want to mention the um, derogatory, distasteful comments, obviously, the uh, chants that were emerging uh, from... I was watching the game on TV last night and it just struck me how amazing the atmosphere was. Mm. And then I saw that clip this morning and it really just sort of you know, spit an exhale about the whole thing and mm. just so bloody needless. Yeah, now I have to say... I didn't hear them. I didn't hear the chance. that the atmosphere was really good. The Eurogardens fans were really loud along with the Rovers fans. Mm. Um, I didn't hear those chants by Queen Elizabeth, I have to say. Um, but obviously, uh, found them on my phone that evening. You know, I mean, there seems to be Irish Twitter was found last night. You know, mm. all of the descendants of the oppressed peoples across the world were looking for instruments of, uh, to fight back. And one of them seems to be Irish Twitter. And these Rovers fans singing at Tallah Stadium mm. uh, became, uh, became one of their more viral clips. But uh, yeah, not... Uh, not great, but... Uh, There'll be some sort of a statement, I presume, from Shamrock Rovers later on saying, oh, we don't endorse this, and then that'll probably be the end of it. Probably, yeah. Look, as I said, it was... It, I didn't hear them. They certainly weren't a topic of conversation among any of the press guys after the game. Didn't mm. come up with the press conference afterwards, but, uh, um, yeah, but obviously uh, they weren't very loud and didn't represent everyone on the ground, but obviously it doesn't take too many, uh, and then the amplifying power of social media. But so there's millions of views on, on, uh, on that tweet. Yeah. I think the like the people that were around and there was enough voices in it. There was like I think maybe one fella who was sort of half you could half see his face. Like you just you'd be embarrassed. I mean to say the least um, if you're involved in that and then you wake up this morning because a bit of group think I think sets in and you don't want to be making excuses for it. If it was another club singing something about an Irish head of state or there was something yeah. going on, we'd be absolutely outraged about it this morning. So there's absolutely no excuses for it. But you just hope that the people that are involved wake up at least embarrassed by whatever went on last night. That, yeah. It was, it and just the not a good fact look. that you were there, Gavin, you didn't actually hear it, so it's mm. been amplified so much now online to yeah. make it maybe look like it was a wider thing at the game when that wasn't the case. Yeah, completely. But then, like, that doesn't absolve yeah, the responsibility not. from no, the no, people no, no. who did sing it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, my condemnation wasn't really strong there, whereas yours was. So I would echo yours. No, really, I look at uh, it. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's horrible. Like. Mm. Yeah, I think we're on the same page. On, on the football side, if it wasn't uh, obvious before this, looking at the game last night, this is a perfect level in, in a lot of ways for a League of Ireland team. They, like, put it up to your garden last night, played loads of football, looked really impressive and ultimately came really close to getting all three points. Stephen Bradley was really was said he was frustrated not to win the game. Mm. And said that he felt that Rovers had the better chances and deserved to win. I think that they... I think a draw was probably a fair result. Rovers could could have won it, but it was pretty evenly matched. You know, your guidance came out at a really good pace um, and really high tempo, and Rovers initially struggled with it, but they got into the game. Um, I think Chris McCann was really good in midfield for Rovers during that uh, first half in terms of just getting on the ball and calming things down. And then Rovers came out were by far the better side for the first maybe 20, 25 minutes of the second half. Mm. Your Garden's coach described that period as a disaster for them, which I thought right. was a little bit OTT. And he uh, reacted by bringing on almost the entirety of his bench. Quadruple sub, yeah. you know? I mean, no one is really interested in the plight of journalists, but seven subs in one <laughs> go is, is, <laughs> is a lot for our match reports. But, uh, uh, but in fairness, he wasn't taken away from Rovers either. He said, look, we made mistakes, but they forced us into it. And he said, look, a point at, at this stadium isn't a bad result, which is a uh, compliment to Rovers. Yeah. Um, and they're the home record's so good. Like they'd won all of their European home games this season so far. Beat Ludogorets, who beat um, who beat Trabzons, uh, Sorry, who beat Roma last night, and it beat uh, French Farosh, who beat Trabzonspor in both those th- games in the Europa League. So, Ashley Grace, like, did you feel like that was a step up out there last night? And he said, no, it wasn't a step up from Ludogorets and French Farosh. So, we've seen that they can hold their own in, in these games, and, and they certainly did last night. Did they underestimate Rovers going into the game? If they had that many changes, did they maybe start Don't know. out with... It's a good question. He did rotate, like he yeah. played a second-choice goalkeeper. He he picked a more attacking team than I think anyone was expecting, the Swedish journalists were expecting. Mm-hmm. Rasmus Schuller is a Finnish international. He played against Ireland in the Nations League uh, as a substitute in 2020. Uh, and he's their, he's their kind of Claude McAuley. He's the glue that holds the cement between the stones, uh, as Eric Ten Hag described uh, Casemiro. And uh, he dropped him, or he rested him and played a far more attacking midfield. And um, maybe there, maybe that's a slight level of disrespect to Rovers. I don't know. They had their homework done nonetheless. Um, and yeah, while they were their manager were disappointed with the performance, he was, as I said, realistic that look a point at Talib, not the worst result. 
the cement between the stones, by the way. I watched the highlights after watching the Rovers game last night. It looked pretty, looked pretty, very looked well. pretty shaky. Yeah. Looked very <laughs> shaky. Um, the, the, just on the substitutes, like it was almost like a rugby. When I saw the watching on the TV, I had no appreciation that there were some Rovers players coming in as well. But when I saw the four players lined up, it was nearly a rugby move. <laughs> like, let's get a full, you know, front row in here, freshen yeah. it up and like grind them. And I, I, geez, I thought this is a, this is going to kill Rovers. And then obviously they, yeah. they had their counter. But it, geez, it threw the, it, it became like gangbusters out there when the subs were made. It was just, they, whatever template the game had been following up to that point seemed to go out the window. Like, but it was a step up in, Quality almost in some ways. Yeah, well, there's only, like what there's twenty outfield players in the field, and they changed seven of them yeah. between the two teams. So it's almost a totally different game, and that's interesting to see. Like, will football become like rugby in the sense that you know we hear all about Eddie Jones finishers, mm. um, and like, do you keep players on the bench in reserve for that last half hour? So that's what I was kind of thinking. Was that what Rovers are doing? Jack Byrne, Graham Burke, Rory Gaffney all on the bench. Uh, Stephen Bradley said afterwards that it was no, it was all a case of rotation. We need the squad. We're fighting on all fronts, and I and I trust everyone in this squad to play and every one of those dark games between now and the run-in I think if Jack Byrne had been a bit fitter I think he would have started uh, He was he's just pure class Like you could see it instantly it made an instant impact dropped a gorgeous ball over the top for Rory Gaffney that the goalkeeper initially made a Hames of will I come will I not eventually went back and then saved, saved really well but I felt <clears throat> even Jack faded in the last 15-20 minutes or maybe 10-15 minutes and Rovers were looking tired at the end I felt they weren't quite clinging on and hacking the ball away from their own goal line but they did look tired. Uh, those extra legs in midfield that uh, Garden has brought in made a difference, you know, and uh, threatening to overwhelm them. Surely that's not right about the like squad rotation bit when they're a hun- like got 166 grand last night, which obviously dwarfs the prize for winning the, their own league. Mm. And if they'd won the game, obviously they would have got vast amounts more. Surely, as a club, like the people who run the club are sitting down and going. Uh, listen, like you know, this other stuff is kind of important, but like we need that money, so mm. all out. Like I presume, if Jack Byrne was fit, uh, he would have started last night. Surely, I think so. Yeah, I would think so. And he seems to be still managing this hip flexor issue. If you look at his Instagram, he's going through all kinds of um, treatments and hard work to try and get back and get fit again. You know, he's had a really frustrating season, and it's a real frustration for Rovers that they haven't been able to play him in Europe yet. Mm. You know, but they've got, and you know, he was the talk of the Swedish journalist looking at the team sheet last night the questions that they were asking I was like oh where's Jack Byrne why isn't Jack Byrne playing um, and you assumed it was a fitness thing and Stephen Bradley said afterwards it was it was a squad rotation issue um, so that is a bit of disappointment now look I don't like we talked about the money we always talk about the money in these games kind of I deliberately left out my match report and I was probably wrong on reflection to do that it's just like you know we get obsessed with the money and like mm-hmm. this is about the competition and the glory of it uh, and Bradley was asked ahead of the game like does the money matter and he said no we're here to here to compete and that's understandable from his point of view obviously the people above him running the club uh, they have to pay attention to the money and rightly so all I would say is that Jack Byrne didn't start but 17 year old Justin Farajai did start mm. which is amazing mm-hmm. and in another of these academy prospects he's so talented he's so exciting did okay last night Didn't wasn't as good as he was against Farage Farage and you know the reality is that Rovers will sell him at some point mm. um, and that you know playing in games like that at the age of 17 will raise his value yeah, and puts them in the shop window as well in a way that uh, domestic games just won't. I'm interested to listen to Brian Kerr and Virgin Media after the game last night and he was talking about how um, Rovers looked a bit more stable defensively almost than they, than they had mm. done in the league. I don't think he was talking, to be fair, about what you're saying there in relation to the last 10 minutes or so where it yeah. was a bit sort of uh, backs to the wall and uh, Damon Delaney mentioned that point about like the players coming through and building up that level of European experience and how that will grow and grow. What's... Um, seeing what you saw last night and obviously they've Ghent and Mulder to come can they get out of that group now? I still think it's going to be probably beyond them right. but they, they're they going to give themselves a chance they won't be that far off I don't think mm-hmm. uh, your guidance were the, were the bottom seeds so you might think if you're going to get out of the group do you need to be beating the bottom seeds at, uh, at home but it's a pretty it's actually a pretty egalitarian group really like I mean Ghent are not the strongest top seeds that they might have gotten you know they might have gotten um, you know West Ham or Fiorentino or, or Villarreal uh, but Malda are really strong second seeds. You know they were in the Europa League with Dundalk a couple of seasons ago. Stephen Bradley has rated Malda as the favourites to top the group, um, because they're ahead of you know Bodo Glimt in uh, in their domestic league. And Bodo Glimt, we've seen Hammer Roma and uh, drove they're flying at the minute. Yeah, Bodo they're really Glimt, good. Yeah. So um, I still think it might be a little bit beyond them. If if like honestly, if Burn could be fit to start every game, mm. you'd give them a chance, um, and they'll be hard to beat. You know they have adjusted. 
uh, they're much harder to break down than they were in Europe. You go back to last year and they were just too open against Flora Tallinn. Um, they're too open in away games, particularly the game against Ferenc Varos, first half against Ludogorets. So they have adjusted. Um, are they slightly more defensive? They probably are. I mean, Dylan Watts played last night as well. He's a he's a forward-thinking midfielder, but he's a midfielder unlike Byrne or Burke or uh, Rory Gaffney. Uh, so they have become more difficult to break down. Um that's not to say they don't pass the ball pretty well. They do. I think one of their problems in the first half was they actually they passed the ball pretty well to get control of the game and just lacked a bit of, pe- bit of penetration in the final third. They're going along to Aaron Green a lot. And it worked early in the second half, but it didn't really work in the first half. And uh, in fairness, there wasn't a whole lot of space by your gardens in the first half when, when Rovers did have the ball. So I still think that it might be a little bit beyond them to get out of the group. Um, but... You know, I wouldn't be shocked if they do it. You know, I mean that last night was a game. It was kind of a, a curious enough game to try and you know what's the angle to the report here because like there's not obvious. Like it's one of those games like either side could have won it, maybe mm. neither side should really. Uh, but Rovers are not going to be generous opponents in this group, and I think that you know some across Europe will look at the look at the League of Ireland inside and say, okay, they're in the third pot. They're exactly who we want. But I think when teams are doing their due diligence on Rovers and they realise that. Their, particularly their home record, they realised that actually they're not an easy draw at all. Mm. And they did have the chances last night. Like that chance you were talking about, it went over the top and the goalkeeper did so well to come mm. out and he just, his body position, he just did really well, I thought. Um, if he had stayed in the goal, it might have been a, a different case, but they had the chances, so it could have been, could yeah, have been different. Yeah, absolutely. And um, d- obviously Dylan Watts had a good snapshot in the, second, uh, in the second half in the box after a really good run down the right by uh, Neil Ferrugia. That was a really good save. A couple of others from set pieces and, and the Dylan Watts from uh, Dylan Watts shot from the uh, from the edge of the box. I think for uh, for the world of nerds out there, I think the XG was pretty even. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I'm tr- they didn't really have your guys didn't really have too many clear cut chances that they wasted. Like Alan Manis wasn't throwing himself left and right to kind of uh, to single handedly claw them away. Um, there was a great chance in the first half when Dan Cleary stumbled over the ball he kind of almost fell in, in slow motion um, and their striker had a guy running to his right just inexplicably didn't pass to him and then inexplicably shot from about 30 yards oh, <laughs> he, he could have taken it so much closer yeah. to goal That's right. as easy for Manus so that was their big chance but other than that I think uh, I, Rovers definitely didn't deserve to lose the game I wouldn't be so sure they deserved to win either and you think that Stephen Bradley was not he, he thought they should have won I, I was just watching him after the game just on the pitch and going up to the fans and that and he seemed pretty happy in, in mm-hmm. good spirits um, I know, obviously, getting a draw is a good result, but uh, did you feel that he was happy with that or they should have won? I think so, yeah. There were times when he was quite a frustrated figure on, on the touchline, particularly at the start. I mean, your gardens did really go at them for the first few minutes and uh, Bradley used his phrase after that our passing was too negative, which I, I wasn't sure what that was. I think maybe that's just hitting it too long or just giving it away too easily. And at the end, he was a bit frustrated because Rovers were, they they were kind of out of the game. Like, it, your gardens were very, were kind of, by far the dominant side near the end mm. and Rovers were struggling to keep possession really and there was uh, there were kind of parts where the press was a little bit misaligned and that's natural like I mean players who have played 90 minutes that's a it's a tiring game you know it's tough to it's tough physically but it's tough mentally as well to to constantly stay, con- stay concentrated for for a full game like that mm. so um, and they were carrying knocks at the end as well like Sean Gannon tweaked his knee and had to had to play 90 minutes regardless I don't think it's too bad but uh, obviously had Rovers had another sub and not use them by the point that Gannon got injured I think he might have come off yeah, I thought he was gone and then he saw him reappear again and was yeah. like, oh, what happened there? That green chance, oh, like 99 times out of 100, the keeper cleans him out and it's a penalty. Yeah, it was like, yeah he did so well. Did, like, watching the replay, I was like, no, he's going to get him this time. I couldn't believe it. I was wondering, uh, should he, did he need to go around the goalkeeper? Could he have taken the shot he, with his he, right? Yeah. Um, but or could he have gone a bit closer to the keeper and take the contact? And Because like the referee is going to blow that up all day because it was so... Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Um, keeper, I thought the keeper did well to kind of, you know, yeah, he, he showed him He showed him down the line. Yeah, like, yeah like, without fouling him. Um, I think he just got a touch. It was just too much on it. Yeah. Yeah, and at that point he might have thought the, the goalkeeper will take me out yeah, here. We'll get the penalty. It was a good yeah. um, The Sun aren't alone in reporting this, mor- this morning. We can receive you at the Aviva. Um, this is obviously on the back of potentially game cancellations um, in Britain. Are we getting games next week? Don't know. Remains to be seen. Uh, we don't know what's happening with those Champions League games. I know there was a, there was a UEFA figure at the game last night who was uh, saying that there may be a chance that the games, the European games, don't go ahead in England mm. um, next midweek and they may be moved to a neutral venue. So naturally the Aviva would be uh, would be an option. Um, whether it's likely to happen, I'm not sure. Uh Seems like an enormous, uh, you know, policing ex- and uh, logistical requirement 
on behalf of the Irish authorities to agree to a game to host like Liverpool or Man City in a massive European game at a few days' notice. So mm. I don't know. It remains to be seen. Um, also remains to be seen if those games will be played at neutral venue. They just don't know. Like I mean, we'll yeah. find clarity on that uh, later this week and we'll find clarity on, on this weekend's games later today. We can do 17 nights Garth Brooks at Crow Park. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on about Garth Brooks. Something, something like that. <laughs> You're heading down later on, yeah? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm away, I'm away in Hollis tomorrow morning. So, I love the way it's uh, like, it's just not fun. credible to be... To be I'm not, you're not going. Accept You're that, just hiding it, Adrian. Credible. It's not credible. <laughs> uh, enjoy the holidays. Thanks a million for coming in. Sure, then. Gavin Cooney of the 42 reflecting on events in uh, Tallaght.